Welcome to Workshop Wednesday. This is DOI for Homeowners by Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we have three segments for you. We're going to be doing a project follow-up. By request, we're going to stomp on some balloons and we're going to do a little tech talk with Steph. <laughs> and we want to remind you that last week we released a cat scratching pose that you can make really fast. And we also asked you on Facebook and on YouTube if you are a dog, cat, both or neither kind of person. So it was very interesting because it was about half and half were dog people or both? So, mom, what are you? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm both, because I did used to have a kitty cat mm -hmm. until I became allergic, but I'm leaning more towards dog and I'm leaning way far towards um, greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yes, I have to say, I am a dog person, definitely a greyhound person. I love my dog. Uh, no hate to cats, but I would say I'm a dog person. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, we're working on a PVC artwork project for Steph's house. And in fact, before we got started, we unmolded that. And it's looking so cool. I cannot wait to share it with you. We're using a little epoxy bling, which is really, really cool. <laughs> Oh, and before I forget, we are here in Tallahassee, Florida. Where are you, you viewing from? Let us know in the comments below because we love to find that out. Okay, so we're going to get right to it and we're going to do our project follow-up. And for that, we have to go to Steph's house. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Welcome to project follow-up. We are here at my house and we are sitting on the concrete privacy bench and we're here in Steph's backyard and we're doing a little project follow-up. We did this actually two years ago this past April. Yeah. So we're here to say that it is holding up really well. Yes, it is holding up super well. There are a couple things that we want to bring to your attention because it has been two years. The first thing is you will notice on the seat, the middle concrete seat here, there is a big crack down the middle. We've had many hurricanes actually over the last two years. In the last hurricane, a really big branch fell on this and broke the middle part of that. But I was also just watching the video where we made this bench and I mentioned that this actual concrete piece, we used not enough water and so it wasn't as strong as the other pieces. So it could have broken because a big strong branch fell on it or because and or because it was a weaker piece of concrete. Like you said, we've been through multiple hurricanes with this bench and it's done exactly what we hoped it would do. Just sit here and not move and that's exactly what it did. Yeah, I do want to bring your attention to the back of this piece here. So here you can see we actually used Bondo to fill in any gaps and the pocket holes that we use. And you can see this is not holding up at, at all really. And we did, Bondo is for indoor outdoor so we thought, you know, this would probably work. But as you can see it did not work. Maybe it didn't work because it was an older bottle of Bondo is kind of what we're thinking, but this could easily be fixed. It's on the back, so it's not a huge deal, but we probably will come at some point and, um, and fix it with, with something else. You'll also notice here at the top, we used two metal brackets that we didn't use in the original video. We honestly can't remember why we put them in, but we do know that we had an issue early on and we just put those on there. They don't look great, but again, they're on the back, so it's not a huge issue for us, uh, but they're holding strong, so that's great. One thing things we're really happy with about this bench is the paint, how well it's held up. This is actually a bare outdoor paint, and it's you can see it's, it's great. It's a little dirty in some places, but it's good. We also use Flex Seal on the, each of the four legs to help prevent moisture from getting in, and it looks like it's holding well. So yeah. two good things we use on this bench. Yeah. So overall, I would do this again. This was a good project to dig exactly what I wanted it to do, and it's nice heavy piece, so I don't have to move it in and out during storms. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with it. Um, I would I would do it again wouldn't use Bondo or no, use a new, no. new bottle of Bondo yeah. so it was, it was a good choice for the garden it was mm -hmm. a good choice for privacy it does exactly when you're sitting on the porch you absolutely don't see the neighbors backyard which, yeah. is, which was the goal and we'll put links to the original uh, part one and part two of the videos where we built the bench and then where we built the concrete seats as well all right let's head back to mom's house So about four weeks ago, we showed you this right here and these balloons. And we've actually, so this is called Bunch of Balloons and you can blow a up a bunch of balloons with this or with a compressor, which we showed you in a video. Mm -hmm. Well, we've actually been keeping the balloons in the garage, just kind of hanging out because we wanted, on the packaging it says that you can, they're reusable. So we've been wanting to see, hey, can you blow them up after they've deflated a little bit? So here you can see most of our balloons are actually still in perfect condition, but we do have some right here that have varying levels of um, deflatedness. And so we are gonna try to re-blow these up and then we have had a request. Mm -hmm. So on YouTube, we had a comment from Jen and she said that her daughter would love to see us stomp on the balloons. So 
Chloe, this is for you. We are gonna stop on the balloons after we blow these, uh, the rest up, we're gonna stop on all of them. All of them over there for you and then we're gonna clean them up. Gonna and clean see up. how easy That's that right. is to do. So let's go ahead and plug this okay. in and we'll try this out. Okay, we'll put, uh, I guess we can do, we'll do this first. And we kept the, the um, inflator plastic tube on them, so we right can here. do that. So we're just gonna stick those in. So we're just sticking them in to the holes right up there. And we realize even though there are different levels of um, deflation, is that a word? <laughs> deflation. Um, we can blow them up, all, blow them up at one time, and then those that are that get full, we can just pull those out while the other ones continue. Yeah. So you'll see. Oh, it's actually pretty cool. See, we actually did um, a little bit of this this weekend. My um, nephews and niece were in town, and they wanted to play with these. So we already got a sneak peek that this does okay. work. So. Okay. So let's mm -hmm. put them where you can okay, see them. Okay. We'll hold them up a little bit because you okay, can't. Okay. I'm gonna see. put some go. earplugs in. All right. Ready? Okay. Let's go. <laughs> way faster than I thought they would. Yeah, so it works. So it, it totally works. Woo, that is so cool. If you have the patience in the room for them to deflate, you can use them over again. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to force them to deflate. So if you are wondering that, I don't think so. That would be nice that to know. That would be nice to yes, know. But, um, but actually there's a hole in this one, so okay. that one's just gonna go. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, mm. but we'll, we'll jump on it. Yes. All right, okay, so let's do it. Okay, let's go. Let's do some jumping. Thank you so much for requesting that, Chloe, because I don't think I would have thought about doing that. We would not have done that, but that was yeah. super fun, and the cleanup was easy with that little Ryobi battery-powered vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Super easy. It was it, it was, was fun. fun. Yeah, it, it was, was fun. fun. And if you're curious what's inside, it's this little plastic thing is inside each of the balloons, so pretty interesting. Yeah. Now we're going to head into our third segment, and we're doing a little tech talk with Steph, and I don't need to be in this segment, <laughs> so I'm going to head out behind the camera. Bye, Mom. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Talk. A couple weeks ago, we showed you a Wise Cam, which is a $20 smart home camera, and then we showed you a Wise Pan Cam, which is $30. Crazy and expensive. We tried them out. We really like them in our homes, and we found out that the Wise Company actually makes this called the Wise Sense. These are motion activated and contact sensors that are included in this in this tiny, tiny box. I just, I can't believe how small this is. So we're gonna unbox this, and then we're gonna set these up around the house and try them out. So first step is we just open it up. So simple. It does have some kind of little tool here. It looks like. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll take that out in a second. But here we go, this is the bridge, and this just plugs into one of the Wise cameras that I currently have. Then we have a contact sensor, oh my gosh, it's so small. And then this is a motion sensor, it's even labeled, which is awesome. Oh, that's so small. And another contact sensor, and, oh, and it's magnetic. They look like toys, they're so small. They look like toys, but that's perfect that they're small because they won't take up, you won't see them. And then there's also stickers on the back. So I'm gonna go get the camera that mom has here at her house and then we're gonna set these up around our house and see how they work. So let me go get that. I am back with one of mom's cameras here so I'm just gonna plug it in. Now in order to use these products, these Sense, uh, Wise Sense products, you do need to have one of the Wise cameras, which is not a big deal because, you know, it's pretty inexpensive. Okay, so the first step, I'm just gonna plug the bridge right into the back of the Wise camera right here and just plugs in nicely and it is nice and recessed so 
don't even notice it's there. All right, I'm gonna go into the app and I'm going to add a, add a product. I'm gonna add the motion sensor. I need to insert the pin in the hole and press and hold the reset button until the red light flashes three times. Three times, okay. It says the bridge is connecting to the motion sensor. It's all connecting. All right, so this is ready to go. I'm gonna name this uh, craft room because this is gonna go in mom's craft room if there's any kind of activity in there. And that was very simple. So we're gonna actually attach these, go attach these to uh, the location and we'll set up this one as well. And then we'll be done. We're here at mom's back door and we've already installed the one part of the sensor onto the door frame. And the other part is actually magnetic. You can see here that we can just put it right on the door without having to take the little sticker off the back. Here you can see the contact sensor is showing that it's closed because the sensors are connected. And once the door's open, it shows that it's open and then it's closed again. So this is a really cool idea for a door, obviously for windows. You could also do some other things that are a little outside of the box, like a, a cookie jar. <laughs> and here you can see mom walk past the motion sensor and here on the phone, it shows that there's been motion detected. You can buy more contact and motion sensors on the WISE website. Hey Steph, thanks for doing that for me. You're welcome, it's easy. It is easy, mm -hmm. um, I actually set up uh, the WISE cam and the mm -hmm. WISE pan cam all by myself, but, and I could have done this, but I don't have to because I have my own tech support. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't want to do the video segment. That's why. <laughs> well, that's true. I did. Yeah. She's like, I'll set it up, but I want to. I don't want to explain it on video. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yes. So we want to give a shout out to Christina Anderson, who in um, our last workshop Wednesday at the very end, we asked if there was anything you noticed that was different back here, and she noticed last time we had uh, the paper towels were missing, and they have now been replaced. Mm -hmm. And they're actually not paper towels; they're called shop towels. They're specific for using in the garage. Yeah, for... shop towels. <laughs> things that are a little more messy, grease and things like that. And you can, they do come in blue. This is the color. I think the other color has been discontinued, but yeah. Um, we get them in bulk. We get them at um, Costco or you can get them at Home Depot or there are a lot of places you can get them, but they're pretty handy. So good job for recognizing that we were missing our and shop And whose job was that to replace those? Hmm. It's her house. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we also had a request for a tour of our wall back here, and we'd like to know if you'd like us to do that. We are going to be changing some things around because with everything's not quite working where it needs to be. We need to move some things so that they're more accessible. So just leave us a comment below and let us know, yay or nay. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. If you like this video, you're not going to want to miss our last two Workshop Wednesdays. They happen every Wednesday. Except most Wednesdays, they happen some Wednesdays. <laughs> Enjoy. They don't happen every Wednesday. I know, that's what I said. It happens Wednesday. Okay. It's, it happens Wednesday-ish. <laughs>